Okay, I'm making another video a long time ago. Gosh, five or six years ago, maybe longer, I made a video on taking a piece of wood, a thin piece of wood, and putting it on top of your, uh, your preform like this. And if you miss your platform, you hit the wood and you don't break it. Keeps you from hitting up above your center line. And had pretty good success with it, but if you're accurate, you don't need that. If you map the wire, you know where you're going to hit the sign. But then, I got to thinking, I wonder if I could stabilize it with clay. So I got me some clay, and I put it on there to try to stabilize it. And uh, I was using some old hard clay I couldn't do nothing with. This stuff's hard here, too, but I couldn't do anything with that. And this coal in here, I just took my sweater off. I got a wool sweater on. I got so hot because I'm working. But uh, I'd say it's probably, y'all laugh up north when I say it, but it's probably 38 or 40 degrees, and that's cold for us. Supposed to get out colder in the morning, but anyway. But that's why I got a short sleeve on. I finally took all the other stuff off. But uh, my friend, Eddie Main, he's got a YouTube series on flint napping like I do and a lot of other people, and it's under Ed Bow. Ed for Eddie, and uh, D as in dog, E-D, Bo as in boy, and O, Ed Bo. He's doing a flint napping video. Now, I saw him and I said, well, that's what I was doing one time. Just recently, he was using clay. So I immediately I get in touch with him, and when something doesn't work right off the bat for me, I usually throw it in the trash can and get rid of it. Instead of trying to learn it and figure it out, it's sort of like a unicycle one time. I got one for Christmas, but the bicycle with just one wheel on it. And after I busted my butt about 15 times and fell in some cow manure and chicken crap, trying to ride it around the barn where the ground was soft, I threw that thing away, and I don't never want to see it again. So that's kind of the way I am flint napping. I'm not an expert on anything. I don't claim to be. Been napping 74 years old. Many, many, many years. I was a teenager when I learned how. Been at it ever since. But uh, I learn something every day. And I learn by watching other people that are better at it than I am. And been at it a lot less time. I'm a slow learner. Took me forever to learn how to play pool or golf. So different people learn different sports faster. Baseball just come natural to me. I was great at baseball. I was left-handed and could see the ball. The ball always looked like a basketball coming at me when I was batting. Could pick up on a curveball real quick, but not riding no unicycle or other thing. So I always nap with abo tools. Here's one of my Moose billets right here. Well, a minute set a big white tail antler. Pressure plate with bone. And then copper come out. Everybody started using copper, so I went to copper. And everybody started using solid copper. You know, or copper boppers, they call them. Solid piece of copper, and I went to that. And then, a few years ago, my old joint started wearing out. And I'd go to bed at night and I'd be hurting, man. I mean, absolutely hurting. And I told my wife one time, I said, this getting old is not fun. I said, when you hurt all the time, nothing's fun about it. She kind of laughed. And uh, I've seen Ebo, Eddie Mayne, um, he come to my house, what it was, to buy some rock. And he told me about these Took a piece of TCD pipe I talk about on all of my YouTube videos, just a hollow cap on it. And it's so light, I don't hurt anymore. And then I've seen Jason Newman, he's switching over to aluminum, different size aluminum billets. And I said, well, I got some a couple of days ago, but today's the first time I had a chance to experiment with. I just did another video, but I was working with a thick piece, and uh, then I worked a thin piece. But this piece is already thin. You saw how thin it was. And I'm gonna show you what you can do with it. And uh, you don't have to worry about breaking it. And I'll probably break it 
And uh, if I do, I'll keep the video going, I promise you. But uh, <clears throat> it reduces the breakage. Because what you're doing, you're making this rock like this thick, if this makes sense. Just say the clay is part of the rock. It's this thick instead of this thick. So it's absorbing a lot of shock. If it's that thick, I'd take this big hammer here and knock the stew out of it. But if it's paper thin, like this, that's almost what this one is, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to barely tap on it. So now i got it real thick. And I'm having trouble knowing how far to back this clay off because today is the first day I got my clay in. Walmart didn't have silly putty. Uh, we could not find anybody, so my wife went online and ordered it. And I got it in. So I'm going to try to run some flakes off this real thin edge here using this silly putty. That's pretty impressive. I didn't dull down there or up here. I'm going to run down here now. That's above the center line. You can tell that's way above the center line. I'm hitting down on it. Seeing if it's gonna break, cause usually when you hit, it's not it's not gonna break in two, but it's not gonna break cause it's above the center line. I'm just trying to see if it's gonna break half in two, cause that's pounding above the center line. But man, that's pretty impressive. Let me bring this below the center line now, like it should have been. Move this clay back a little bit. Mash it in, do it. Grind it. I want you to stay put right there. I'm not going to feed you no hamburger meat tonight. You hear me? I'm going to hit down just like this. And went right to the center. Now watch this. This is something else I'm learning. I hate trying to hit a rock on the end. When you hit a rock on the end, you usually break it right in the center. But I've also found if you hit it on angles like this, your shock's not coming down the center. And I have also discovered if you don't hold it tight in the center on your leg in the center, you can get away with it a lot more. This probably gonna break because I'm saying this, but nope. Fluke channel run all the way down to there. So I'm gonna come off of this one. Come off of that one. And there we go. Now I'm gonna take this off so you can see how thin this piece is. It's pretty doggone thin now. I didn't thin this, this is already thin. You saw me pick it up. I just wanted you to see what I'm working with. So let's go on this side over here and uh, do a few isolated platforms here. copper bopper down on this edge because I'm more used to it and I'm gonna, it's right on the end I'm gonna make sure I run a good place if I like that right there I know the angle was said I finally got familiar with it all right now I'm gonna go back to the to the one that's made out of aluminum where it really don't matter that much up here if I mess up on the angle and we're gonna try it I love working with the aluminum, man. It bites into that stuff. It's just a matter of me figuring out how strong it's muscle memory. I always say that, how strong to make the platform and which angle to use. Because when I'm not hitting on here, I'm hitting, holding this hand up so I can change my angle with my hand as well as me hitting it. And that was a pretty good angle right there. That piece run a little over halfway. Another good one. Another good one. All right, now I'm ready to take this off and come across the other side. I would be pressure flaking this, but I'm in a hurry for the video time. I know what you stuff consistently over, consistent, the same stuff over and over and over on a consistent basis gets real boring. And uh, what I usually do when I'm watching people nap on YouTube is I watch the little up to uh, kind of lost interest, and then I'll come back na next day and watch the rest of it because my attention span is not very long. And I love watching it, but I learn more doing it like that. All right, now, 
that one was too straight down that way. I don't know what that for. Just what I say. And that one was too straight in to give me a ridge right there. So this is what I got to learn. And now I'm going to come down the base of it and run a flute channel to get that ridge out. I don't know how that's going to work. But I do know one thing. All this is making sense. It's just taking a matter of me figuring out what to use and when to use it and how hard to hit and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> you want to press it in real good so you can get out on the uh, little holes in there. Every little crack and step fracture, whatever. That should have run. Oh, yeah, look at that. Boy, that did good. Took that ridge, I mean, right out of there. Man, that did good. Wow. Impressive. Okay, I'm going to uh, thin this in real quick. The way I know how to do it, the way I've been doing it, put it this way. This is a learning method. And the reason I'm going to thin this real quick is I don't want this video to be real long. And I'm going to show you how good it works on indirect percussion. Stay right there. Give you an electric blanket tonight because you've been good. You're not rolling around. This is why I got in a hurry. I think you'll understand. Right in here, up, I thinned it where it's ready for indirect percussion. Rather than work the whole thing, it would took another 30 minutes or so. And now we're going to do indirect percussion using the clay as a, uh, as a backup. It's a thickener or shock absorber, whatever you'll call it. I used to go in pool halls when I was younger. I had this big old dude about 6'4", and he's my backup man. Because I knew a fight was going to break out, but uh, I'd go in there and bet him money with a knife. I could do something with a knife, and I'm not going in them details. And They didn't think I could, and when I wanted their money, they wanted their money back. And So this clay is my backup player. That guy's name, we call him Goose. G-O-O-S-E, Goose. Big Goose. So this is my big goose, right here. I'm gonna put big goose, stiffen him up. Make sure I'm, I'm looking where those holes were so I know where I wanna put pressure at. Make sure I got all the void filled in. All right, now. Now, I'm not going to do any more. I'm going to show you. Let me pick my rod up. Get off the floor and bend over. Fat, fat man can't bend over too much. Made a little bird point. I broke it off. Put it on a shishky bob skewer. 
about that long and put a, a thistle, the fluffy part off of the thistle bush on there for the cotton. And I made me some darts for my blowgun. I broke the point off of that one. And then I shot it again and stuck it in that crack in my barn and it went sideways. And I didn't realize I went to pull it out and broke it off. But you make little air points like that and put them on your uh, blowgun darts. And you're talking about increasing the effectiveness, the, how efficient they are. It makes them so more effective than just a regular uh, wooden point because of a little bit of extra weight on them. And uh, boy, those things work good. Okay. Don't know. But right in there is where I was hitting. And man, it knocked that sung gun just super thin right in there. Now I'm going to come across one more. I said, go quit. I'll see one more little spot right here we're going to work on. Not, I'm thinking it might make it easier for you to see. Wherever you lay this down, something's going to stick to it, even though it's hard. And I just had two sharp plates stuck to it. So my recommendation, if you're going to start using this type of clay anyway, is to, uh, before you use it, make sure all your flakes are out of it. You go to press it on it, press one of them sharp flakes in your hand. That's not going to be too funny. Wow, man, that was good. I'm going to move right up here and see what happens. Another good one. I caught that one. Look at that. Well, I took it off. I didn't know my battery was on low. I had the flake. There it is. Man, unbelievable. I hope the video didn't start over with the battery coming up showing me this low. Wow. <laughs> Man, I can't get the... Sticky stuff off of it, but look, I'm all excited. Look at that flake that come off. All that came out of right in there. I don't know if you can see how thin that knocked that song gun. I can't wait to do the rest of it and see what it turns out. Y'all have a blessed day. Hope you enjoyed it.